first day I bought stocks was March 12, 1941, 40, 40, uh, 42. And uh, the stocks were down about 2% that day, as it turned out. Unfortunately, I bought in the morning, so when I came home in the evening and my dad told me the execution price, it was down 2%. But, uh, uh, if you're buying a business, uh, and, and that's what stocks are, businesses. In fact, people would be better off if they say, I bought a business today, not a stock today, because that gives you a, a different perspective on it. Then presumably, you buy a farm, if you buy an apartment house, if you buy a business, you're going to own it for 10 or 20 or 30 years. And the real question is, is has the 10-year or 20-year outlook for, for American businesses changed in the last 24 hours or 48 hours, and we're going to, you'll notice many of the businesses we own, partially own, American Express, we've owned it for 20 years, Coca-Cola, we've owned it for 40 years. Uh, those are businesses, and uh, you don't buy or sell your business based on on, uh, on today's headlines, and uh, if it gives you a chance to buy something that you like, and you can buy it even cheaper, then it's your good luck, basically. Uh, I, I don't think anybody knows what the market's going to do. I think you know, do know whether you're making an intelligent purchase at a given price. Everybody, when they buy a stock, if you're going to buy, say, General Motors, that has a billion, 400 million shares out, you should be able to take a yellow pad like you have there, and on one page, say, let's say it's selling for 30, it isn't selling that low, but that'd be 42 billion. You should say, I am buying the General Motors company for $42 billion because, and you should get it on a piece of paper. And then if you want to have a separate piece of paper, it says, I think I know what the stock market's going to do, so I know whether it'll be higher or lower in a week. But you don't I guarantee them cars are going to slow down someday. <laughs> they, uh, in, in, in 1932, General Motors had 19,000 dealers. That's more than all the auto dealers in the United States today. There were only 125 million people then, but they had 19,000 dealers. They produced uh, or sold, and there was one month, I think, when they sold less than a tenth of a car, right at a tenth of a car per dealer. That was a terrific time to buy General Motors. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, forget about the market. If, if you can predict the market, you don't need to read balance sheets. You don't need, you don't need, to, read, uh, you don't need to read anything. You, you certainly can't predict the market by reading the daily newspaper. That is for sure. And you really can't, you certainly can't predict the market by listening to me, uh, but you're buying businesses. And if you had planned to buy a local service station yesterday and it was closing today, I don't think you'd tear your hair out or anything like that. You'd have already looked at where it was located and the contract that it had with the suppliers and made a decision on competition. People, because they can make decisions every second in stocks, whereas they can't with farms, they think an investment in stocks is different than an investment in a business or an investment in a farm or an investment in an apartment house, uh, but it isn't. It, if, if you get your money's worth in terms of future earning power over the next 10 or 20 or 30 years, you're going to have made a good investment, and you can't pick them from day to day. If you can do that, you can, well, I haven't met anybody yet that, that knows how to do it. Edgar Lawrence Smith changed the world with that book, and the people have forgotten all about it now. Although in the 1920s, it, it became more and more gospel as the boom went on. But Edgar Lawrence Smith set out to write a book on bonds versus stocks. And he said, if he went in with the idea that bonds would be a better investment in times of deflation, and stocks would be a better uh, investment in times of inflation. And the first line of his book was, to say that he'd been wrong, but he had enough sense to look at his evidence. I, mean, I think Darwin said if you found evidence that was contrary to what you already believed, write it down in 30 minutes or your, your mind will just block it out. I mean, people have a great resistance to new evidence. And he said if a stock yields 4% and a bond yields 4%, which was what he was talking about then, the stock was going to outperform the bonds because there were retained earnings that were building beyond that yield. And that's, that had been true for a long, long time, but nobody paid any attention to it. Uh, we don't get rich on our dividends that we receive, although we're happy to receive them. We get rich on, on, on the fact that the retained earnings are used to build new earning power, repurchase uh, shares, which increases your ownership in the company, and, and, uh, uh, and, and Berkshire is retained earnings ever since we started. That's the only reason Berkshire's worth a lot more as we retain earnings. You can get my old boss, Ben Graham, told me very early on, you get more trouble with a good idea than a bad idea because the good idea works. I mean, it's a good idea to buy a home, for example, and then 
People go crazy. The good idea works and it works and it works. Stocks work out better than bonds most of the time. And after a while, people forget that there were some other limiting conditions. With Edgar Lawrence Smith's book, it was that when bonds yield the same as stocks, which was the case then, that stocks are going to outperform because they have this retained earnings. So stocks started going up in the 20s, and all of a sudden they were selling at five or six times the prices as when he bought the book. And the original correct uh, perception on his part had experienced changing conditions, but people just looked. They, they got their confirmation through stock prices, and people that's what happens in bull markets. People people start out thinking stocks are cheap, and then they start thinking stocks have gone up. <laughs> and, and a stock can be a good buy or a bad buy. A bond can be a good buy or a bad buy. It depends on price. If you look at the present situation, we've talked about this before, that you get more for your money in stocks than bonds. That doesn't have to be the case. I mean, uh, uh, but it's usually been the case in, in America, very usually been the case. And, and if you buy a 30-year bond today with a yield 2%, you're paying 50 times earnings for an investment where the earnings can't go up for 30 years. Now, if somebody said, I want to sell you a stock that's at 50 times earnings and the earnings can't go up for 30 years, you'd say that doesn't sound very good. Stocks are way better than 30-year bonds. I mean, it, 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 that's clear. And, and that's one of the alternatives people have. People really have three basic alternatives. Short-term cash, which is an option of doing something later on. Long-term bonds or, or, or long-term stocks. And stocks are cheaper than bonds. There's always trouble coming. Yeah, there was trouble coming in 1942 when I bought that first stock, all kinds of trouble. Philippines were going to fall pretty soon. I'm never, uh, and there was all kinds of trouble in 1949. There was trouble, uh, certainly trouble in 2008 when I wrote an article for the New York Times. I said trouble is coming. I would say buy stocks if you get enough for your money. And, you know, we buy a few stocks, but we don't look at, we're, we're not buying the stock market. We're saying I am buying, let's say American Express, we own American Express. You know, there's, 815 million shares out and sells it this morning at 126 or something like that. So it's selling for roughly $100 billion. Now, the real question is whether the company's worth more or less than $100 billion. It isn't what the stock is going to do tomorrow or next week or next month. We own $240 billion worth of stocks. Now, we look at that as $240 billion worth of businesses uh, that we own parts of. But uh, I love owning those businesses. I would say that I received commentary. I get, I get some commentary monthly with... Uh, from, from almost all of the companies, and, and a good many of them had some comment about how it was affecting them, and however it was affecting them at, at that time, I'm sure it's accentuated. But they've been affected by, they were affected by tariffs, they're affected by taxes, they're affected by, the most thing is they're affected by competitors and supply and demand over time.